need sunglasses early around here. <laughs> okay. Well, we are going to talk about categoricals. To understand categoricals, you have to understand propositions. Propositions are what are true or false. It is early in the morning. That is true. Man, that is a sentence that is true. Uh, there's 98 dogs behind me. That is false. <laughs> propositions are what is true or false. Not every sentence is a proposition. Okay? Not every sentence is a proposition. There are plenty of sentences that are not propositions. What time is it? That's a sentence. Okay? But that's an interrogative. It's a question. It's not, uh, questions are neither true nor false. Uh, go lay down. If I'm talking to my dog, go lay down. That is a, uh, uh, an imperative, a command. That is also neither true nor false. All right, imperatives are either followed or not followed. <laughs> questions uh, are either answered or not answered. Okay. But, or have an answer or don't have an answer. But uh, propositions, right? Propositions are what are true or false. And when we're dealing with categoricals, categoricals are um, propositions that compare things of one kind to things of another kind. Okay? So, uh, you know, this is where we're talking about categories, categories of things. Okay? So consider lake. Lake is a category. Right? It, has, it contains, right, in a sense, or refers to all lakes. Okay? So this is a lake. This is Lake Brownwood. Okay. This is not all lakes, just one. But when I say lake, I'm referring to all lakes, including this one. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, when we are compare, when we have categoricals, we're comparing things of one kind to things of another kind. We're comparing the subject to the predicate. The subject is what's described by the predicate. All right. So uh, all lakes have water, or uh, so. Uh, all lakes are water bodies, right? Okay, so the subject there are lakes. Now that's the subject. Subject is lakes. The predicate is bodies of water, right? So here's a categorical. All lakes are bodies of water. Lakes is the subject. Bodies of water is the predicate. Right? Now, the predicate, of course, t contains more than just lakes, right? So all lakes are bodies of water, that's true, but all bodies of water are lakes, that's false, right? <clears throat> um, so all lakes are bodies of water, other bodies of water, right? Oceans, rivers, ponds, um, streams, uh, seas. <laughs> These are all bodies of water. Lakes is just one of them, okay. When we're dealing with categoricals, we have four parts. We have the subject and we have the predicate. We just talked about the subject and the predicate, right? The subject is what's described by the predicate. The predicate is what's described, was what describes the subject, all right? We also have the quantifier and the copula. So we got the subject, the predicate, the quantifier, and the copula. So we're dealing with categoricals. Categoricals are propositions. Propositions are either true or false. Uh, I gave an example of a categorical earlier. All lakes are bodies of water. Right? And in that categorical, we have the subject and the predicate. Lakes is the subject. The predicate is bodies of water. The subject is described by the predicate. The predicate describes the subject. Um, so I repeat myself a lot. I'm a big believer in repetition. Uh, so if you're not, I apologize in advance. All right. We have two other parts to a categorical. Uh, we have the subject and the predicate. That's two parts. The other two parts are the quantifier and the copula. Now, the quantifier tells us how many. How many of the subject are des is described by the predicate, right? So uh, all is our quantifier. When I say all lakes are bodies of water, that's all lakes, not just some. <laughs> all lakes. Uh, every single lake is a body of water, okay? All right, that's the quantifier. We have two other quantifiers. We have all, all right? We have two other quantifiers. We have some, okay? And we have no, right? 
So uh, some lakes are in North America. Right? In North America is the predicate, lakes is the subject. Still, right, you still got the subject as lakes, predicates now in North America. And we have the quantifier some. Some lakes are in South America. Some lakes are in Africa. Some lakes are in Asia, right? We can, you know, list all the continents. <laughs> well, actually, sorry, not Antarctica or, or the Arctic, can we? Anyway, uh, so we have quantifiers, right? Quantifiers tell us how many. All says all of them, some is some of them, at least some of them, I should say, at least one, maybe more, not necessarily, but maybe more, right? Uh, and the reason why I say that, right, we had the uh, uh, categorical earlier, all lakes are body of water. Well, that's true. What's also true are some lakes are bodies of water. Sure, that's true. Right? Now, it sounds funny to your ears because you're like, but, but, but it's all lakes are bodies of water. Well, yes, all lakes are bodies of water, but if it, all lakes are bodies of water, then at least some are. Okay. Remember, it's just true or false. That's all we're worried about here. We're not worried about uh, what isn't said, only what is said, right? Okay, so we got all lakes are bodies of water, all's a quantifier. Some, uh, some lakes are in North America, some is the quantifier. Then we have no, right? We have another quantifier, no. All tells us every member of the subject is described by the predicate. Some tells us at least some of the members of, of, of the subject are described by the predicate. No tells us that no members of the subject are described by the predicate. So no lake is what? Uh, no lake is composed of gravel. <laughs> or uh, no lake is um, made of cookies. <laughs> uh, no lake. I wish I could say no lakes are on fire, but some lakes have actually caught fire because of all the pollution that's that's in them. Uh, <laughs> um, no lake is gaseous, right? No lake is just a gas. I mean, there's gases in there, chemically speaking, but no lake is, uh, you know, in a gaseous state. It's in a it's in a liquid state. Right? Uh, no lake is. Um, a member of Congress. I mean, these are kind of ridiculous. Sorry about that. But no lake is a living thing. How about that? No lake is a living thing. Lakes aren't alive. Right? Lakes aren't alive. They have living things in them. Right? They are necessary for living things. Okay, but they themselves are not alive. Much like you know, the air, right? the atmosphere. The atmosphere is not alive. Okay. Or uh, no lake can perform algebra. <laughs> No lake is human. How about that? No lake is human. Let's do that. All right. No lake is an animal. Maybe you want to say lakes are alive. Okay, fine. Have at it. Have fun. But at the very least, no lake is an animal. Right? No lakes are animals. All right? The subject is lakes. Predicate is animals. And when we say no lake, animals, we're saying that every member of lake right, is not described by uh, uh, animal. Now, uh, you know, maybe we, uh, we, we could also uh, phrase that one in a particular way. Uh, but we're going to get to, you know, just to kind of forecast, right? We say no lakes are animals. We could also say our lake, all lakes are not animals. Right? I don't want to confuse it too early, but just keep in mind, right? We got all, some, and no. Those are our three quantifiers. We're talking about categoricals. Categoricals are a kind of proposition. Propositions are either true or false. <clears throat> a categorical has four parts. The quantifier, the subject, the predicate, and the copula. All right? The subject is what's described by the predicate. The predicate describes the subject. The quantifier tells us how many. So we have all lakes are bodies of water. All is the quantifier. Lake is the subject. Bodies of water is the predicate. The copula is what tells us whether the subject is described by the predicate or not. And in this case, is the word R. Now, just kind of foreshadowing, right? There's a variety of different copula. They're basically the to be verbs. There's going to be some variation, but it's basically the to be verbs. Right? Is, 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 <laughs> to be, is, uh, was, are, uh, to be, is, was, were, be, being, been, right? That, those are the 
to be works. I can't believe I stumbled on that. <laughs> so the copula tells us whether the subject is described by the predicate or not. All lakes are bodies of water. R is the copula. All lakes are not animals. R not is the, is the copula. So, quantifier, subject, predicate, copula. Copula tells us whether the predicate describes a subject or not. Uh, are or are not, is or is not. Okay. All legs are bodies of water, are is the copula, all legs are not mammals, are not is the copula. All right, so we have our four parts to the categorical. Okay. Quantifier, subject, predicate, copula. Depending on your combinations of parts, you're going to have four different kinds of categoricals. Right, four different kinds of categoricals. Let's look at that next. Okay. So the first kind of categorical we're going to deal with is called universal affirmative. Now remember our four parts to a categorical, quantifier, subject, predicate, copula. Right. What a universal affirmative does is it tells us that every member of the subject is described by the predicate. So we've already had some examples. All lakes are bodies of water. All lakes are bodies of water. Every single one. There is no lake that is not a body of water. Right? So all lakes are bodies of water. That's a universal affirmative. Every member of the subject is described by the predicate. All dogs are mammals. Right? Quantifier all, subject dog, copula R, predicate mammal. All mammals are warm-blooded. All right? Uh, again, all for the universe, uh, all for the quantifier, uh, mammal for the subject, R for the copula, warm-blooded for the predicate. Okay. Um, all mammals are animals. Okay. Also a universal affirmative. Okay. So this is our first kind of categorical, universal affirmative. It says every member of the subject is described by the predicate, every single one, none left out, all right? All right, that's our first kind. Let's try the next one. So the first kind of categorical we had was universal affirmative. It's universal in the sense that every member of the subject is involved. It's affirmative in the sense that every member of the subject is described by the predicate, all right? Is described by the predicate. The affirmative is described by the predicate. Okay, that's what makes you universal affirmative. Let's look at universal negative. <laughs> let me, I'll let you take a stab at what this means, right? Universal, we just got finished saying this. Every member of the subject is involved. It's negative in the sense that it's not described by the predicate. It's not described by the predicate, right? Universal negative. All legs are not animals, right? All legs are not animals. Saints universal sense is dealing not just with this lake, but with every single one, and is not described by the predicate animal. All, right? uh, all animals are not plants. All animals are not plants. All, right? um, all what? All stars are not animals. <laughs> Celestial bodies up in the sky, stars, every single one is not an animal. All right? uh, Let's think of another one. Um, all plants are not animals. So we have the, uh, you have the quantifier all, subject, say we'll go back to lakes, lake, predicate, uh, copula are not, predicate, animal. Okay. Now, that's one formulation for the universal, uh, universal negative. This is an important lesson to remember. The words in particular are not what's going to make a categorical one of the particular kinds. You have to comprehend the meaning. So I said all legs are not animals. That's true, right? We have a quantifier all and the copula are not. Well, we could also say no legs are animals. That is still a universal negative. Different quantifier instead of all, now we have no. Different copula, right? instead of are not, we have are. Um, we can even, you know, I was dealing with the, the plural with lakes and animals. We can deal with the singular. No lake is an animal. Right? Now it's a different, still a different copula because now we have is. Right? 
So what makes a categorical categorical is not necessarily the word, right? So not every universal affirmative, uh, excuse me, not every categorical beginning with a quantifier all is a universal affirmative. Right. Okay. Um, what it is going to be what the proposition means, right? What the proposition means. Universal affirmative, every subject is described by the predicate. Universal negative, every subject is not described by the predicate. So all lakes are uh, bodies of water, universal affirmative. No lake is an animal. No lakes are animals. All lakes are not animals. All three of those are universal negatives. Universal negatives. Right? Saying the subject is, every member of the subject is not described by the predicate. Quick review time. Quantifier, how many are involved? Copula, whether the subject is described by the predicate or not. Subject uh, is what described by the predicate. Predicate is what describes the subject, right? Or what describes. Universal affirmative, every member of the uh, subject is described by the predicate. Universal negative, uh, every member of the subject is not <laughs> described by the predicate. These are all propositions. Propositions are whether true or false. Two more to go. Right, the universal affirmative and the universal negative are categoricals that deal with every member of the subject. Universal affirmative says every member of the subject is described by the predicate. The universal negative says every member of the subject is not described by the predicate. The particular categoricals deal with at least one. At least one. All right. So uh, some lakes are in North America. Right? The quantifier there is some. The copula you're familiar with already is R. Subject is lake in North America is a predicate. All right. Some lakes are in North America. Uh, that says that at least one of the lakes, <laughs> in this case, it was true, right? At least one of the lakes is in North America. There are many in North America. Some lakes are in Minnesota. <laughs> a lot of lakes are in Minnesota, right? But um, uh, uh, the, the particular affirmative says at least some members of the subject are affirmed, are described by the predicate. Right? That's particular affirmative, particular because only dealing with some members of the subject. All right. Um, the other uh, kind of particular is particular negative. Right? Some lakes are in North America. By the way, some lakes are not in North America. Right? Just because some lakes are in North America, that doesn't mean that some aren't. Right? So um, particular negative says that at least some members of the subject are not described by the predicate. At least some lakes are in North America. Okay. Some lakes are in North America. Some lakes are not in North America. All right. Um, some mammals are dogs. Some mammals are not dogs. Um, these are both true. Some mammals are dogs. That's a particular affirmative. Some mammals are not dogs. That's the particular negative. All right. Um, some pets are cats, right? Some pets are cats. I feel bad for cat owners, but hey, getting, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Some pets are cats, that's a particular affirmative. Some pets are not cats, that's a particular negative. Um, some, what? Uh, some students attend San Antonio College. Uh, some students are not at San Antonio College. Yeah, particular affirmative, particular negative. So we've got uh, four kinds of categoricals. Universal affirmative, universal negative, particular affirmative, particular negative. Universal affirmative says every member of the subject is described by the predicate. Universal negative says every member of the subject is not described by the predicate. Particular affirmative says at least some members of the subject are described by the predicate. Particular negative, at least some members are not described by the predicate. All right. Not necessarily all, by the way. Don't 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 jump ahead of yourself. But you know, not necessarily all, right? If if a particular affirmative means that all, okay, all of them are, then there's no difference between particular and universal. But clearly there is. All right. Anyway, <coughs> doesn't rule it out either. <laughs> but let's leave that aside, right? Um, we'll get to that a couple chapters from now. <laughs> So we got the four kinds of categoricals, universal affirmative, universal negative, particular affirmative, particular negative. All categoricals are composed of four parts. You have the quantifier, 
which tells you how many of the subject are either described or not described. You have the subject, which is described by the predicate. You have the copula, which says whether it is described or not, and the predicate, which is what does the describing, right? Does the describing. Okay. That's four kinds of categoricals. Four kinds of categoricals. And you'll be expected to identify not only which of the four kinds that you're dealing with, but identify the parts. Right? Identify the parts. Okay. Uh, and in you know, particular, right, you know, what you really need to be able to identify is universal versus particular, affirmative versus negative. Right? Universal versus particular, affirmative versus negative. All right, I just got finished saying at the last video that categoricals have four parts. Every categorical has four parts. Quantifier, subject, copula, predicate. Now, I, I did warn you <laughs> that the uh, particular words used, you know, th that doesn't necessitate uh, what kind of categorical is involved. Because, <laughs> you know, while you know, want to try to you know, deal with categoricals. Very few sentences are uh, sound like, you know, all lakes are bodies of water, right? A lot of times you just get lakes are bodies of water. <laughs> and that, that's fine, right? I'm not knocking it. This is, this is what happens with a natural language like English, right? Uh, the more we get into logic, we're going to have a, you know, artificial language or formal language, right? They're using a lot of symbols and there's, you know, removing as much ambiguity as possible. English, all natural languages are not like, especially English, right? English loves to make a whole bunch of rules and then break them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so for instance, right, all lakes are bodies of water, right? We try to have our nice uh, 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 parts of our categoricals there. Well, a lot of times in English, you're going to have some lakes are not, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to have, uh, you're just going to have lakes are bodies of water, right? Or this lake is beautiful. Or, um, right, lakes are cool. Oh, okay, that, that, that's fine. Right? Um, but you have to be able to identify the parts. You have to be able to translate right, these, these sentences in plain natural English into our categoricals. Right? Now, unfortunately, since, like I said, English loves to make a, have a bunch of rules and then break them, there are no hard and fast rules for doing this translation. You're going to have to rely upon the context. You're going to have to rely upon the meaning of the sentence within that context in order to translate it. So what you know the the difference is right. What you have to look out for is are four kinds of categoricals. Whether every member of the subject is is described by the predicate. That's the universal affirmative. Every member of the subject is not. That's the universal negative particular affirmative, at least one member, right? And particular, a uh, particular affirmative and particular negative, at least one member of the subject is not. Let's go through a few examples and some noticeable cases. All right, so I guess just got finished saying that English isn't always so neat and tidy when it comes to its quantifier, subjects, copulas, and predicates. This is true. So one case, for example, is uh, categoricals of singulars, right? And this is, you know, these are categoricals with one and only one subject. Right? There's only one and only one thing in the subject class. Right? So uh, this works, you know, we're, you know, we're dealing with like individuals. Yeah? So Dr. Haugen is shooting a video. Right? Okay. Dr. Haugen shoots video. Right? <laughs> uh, Dr. Haugen teaches philosophy. Right? These are propositions and they are understood as categoricals. Right? Uh, Lake Brownwood is in Texas. That's a singular. Right? There's one and only one thing that is uh, Lake Brownwood. Now, here's the question. When you have a subject class of one and only one thing, what kind of categorical is it? Now we got universal affirmative, universal negative, sub, uh, particular affirmative, particular negative. Right? Now, whether you're dealing with a singular, that doesn't affect whether it's affirmative or negative, right? Because you can say Dr. Haugen is, shoot, is shooting a video. You can also say Dr. Haugen is walking on the moon. Right? The first is an affirmative. The first, uh, <laughs> sorry, Dr. Haugen, is, Dr. Haugen is not walking on the moon. <laughs> the first is an affirmative. The second is the negative. It doesn't matter whether you're dealing with a singular or not, right? 
that's not a, what is important here is whether you got a, a universal or a particular so what do you think dr haugen is shooting video is that a universal affirmative or is that a particular affirmative now you might think well it's a particular affirmative because you got only one okay now, now remember the particular says at least one member of the subject class okay that's true right i mean there's at least one member of the subject class that's shooting video that's dr haugen <laughs> but the universal affirmative says every member of the subject class is described by the predicate how many members <laughs> we'll say dr haugen shoot a video how many members are you shooting one how many are there one so how many all of them <laughs> now this sounds a little funny to, to your ears but you know, every member of the subject class, namely me, is shooting video. Therefore, Dr. Haugen is shooting video is a universal affirmative. Universal affirmative. Uh, Dr. Haugen is not walking on the moon. That's a universal negative. When we say every member of the subject class, we're not saying just some, right? We're saying every member of the subject class. Therefore, this, you know, when we're dealing with the categoricals of singulars, it's going to be a universal it's going to be universal, whether it's a universal affirmative or a universal negative. So let's talk about English grammar a second. In English grammar, there's a part of speech called the article. Article is not what, not in this sense, not what you, you know, that thing that you have to read for your courses. That's not what I'm talking about. An article is a word, right? part of speech right? that's used to integrate quantity. Now, immediately, this should get you thinking of quantifiers. And that's right. right? It deals with quantifiers. Unfortunately, there's no hard and fast rules. Uh, with the article to tell us whether we're dealing with the universal or the particular. Oops. <laughs> That's frustrating. All right. So there's two kinds of articles. You know, at least to start, we're going to deal with two kinds of articles, the definite and the indefinite. The definite uses the word the. Right? The lake uh, is cool. All right. Uh, that's the word the. That's the definite article. The indefinite uses the word it is either a or n. Right? Um, a bird is flying. Right? That's the indefinite article. Now, the the points to a specific one. Now, immediately, uh, usually, it points to a specific one. Now, immediately, uh, this might get you to think, that, well, there was a, a particular there, right? The lake is cool. All right. Yeah. At least one lake is cool. Okay. Maybe, right? But as far as uh, you know, that's concerned, uh, we could also say uh, the lake is, is a body of water. The bird is a mammal. I'm oh, sorry, the bird is an avid. The bird is an animal. Right? Uh, depending on context, that can either be the particular or the universal. Right? Um, so there's no, there's no hard and fast rules when you're dealing with that definite article to determine whether you're dealing with a universal or a particular. You have to rely upon context. You have to rely upon the meanings of the terms. And in some cases, you have to rely upon uh, you know, which one's actually going to be true. Right? So the lake is cool. All right. Or, uh, you know, that, that's fine. Is every lake cool? No, not really. I mean, some get pretty warm. Some are down right frigid. Right? Or uh, the lake is calm. Okay, that's probably a particular. Because right? not every lake is calm. So you have to rely upon context. or rely upon which one's going to be true. Okay. That's the definite article. The indefinite article is pretty much the same way. Right? They can either be used for the particular or the universal, depending upon context, depending upon the meaning. You know, and in some cases, which, which one's going to be true? Right? So a boat is on the water. That's true. right? That doesn't mean every boat is on the water. Right? Lots of boats are in dry dock. Lots of boats haven't been sold yet. Yeah. Lots of boats are sitting in driveways. <laughs> so a boat is on the water. That's not true as the universal. It's true as a particular. Yeah, it's true as a particular. Um, a lake is a body of water. Well, yeah, that's true as universal, right? There are no lakes that are not bodies of water. Right. Okay. So, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, the indefinite article doesn't determine necessarily whether you deal with the universal or a particular. You have to look to context. You have to look at the understanding and meaning of the terms. And again, in some cases, you just got to rely upon what's true, right? You're going to have to figure out, okay, was well, this going to be true as a universal, true as a particular? I mean, it can be both in some cases, right? Not every case. <laughs> it can be both in some cases. Um, and again, you know, sorry, English has lots of rules and we like to break them. So 
there's no determined way to figure it out. You're going to have to comprehend what's going on. All right, so let's take a look at the proper article and the absent article. <laughs> the proper article uh, looks a lot like the definite article because it uses the same word. <laughs> English, gotta love it. So uh, the proper article is used to indicate like a singular thing, right? almost like a name. So the White House, the Pacific, uh, the, uh, the winner of the race, right? So the, you know, the proper article gives us you know, one and only one thing is, is what is happening with the proper article. And you know, as far as categoricals are concerned, yeah, they work just the same way as, as the singulars, right? Remember we dealt with singular earlier? Well, when we're dealing with the proper article, it, it were, they're treated as universals because it's, you know, it's the one and the only one. Um, now, you know, the proper article is used most most on you know, like a name or something kind of famous, right? Even if a, you know, a couple of generic terms are used for, so white, that's a generic term, house, that's a generic term, but the white house, right? Now you got a name for, for something in particular. Okay, so that's the proper article. The proper article gives us one and only one thing. It's like the singular categoricals, like the categoricals are singulars, and it's treated as a universal because it's dealing with every member of the subject because it's just one. The absent article is when there's no article to be found whatsoever. Lakes are bodies of water. There's no article there. <laughs> um, it's absent, it's gone, it's mysterious. <laughs> Lakes are bodies of water. Yeah, right? That, when we're dealing with the absent article, we're dealing with the, kind of the implicit presumption is that it's all of them, right? all of them. Um, if you don't have an article and you're dealing with like maybe just one thing, uh, bird flies. Yeah, <laughs> that, that sounds, uh, that's even, that's even uh, too harmful for, you know, e even for English, right? <laughs> that sounds too weird even for English. So uh, when we're dealing with the, absent article, the implicit presumption that it's, a, it's, it's a universal. And then, you know, where the proper article is dealing with just one, the absent article looks like it's dealing with all of them, right? Um, if, you know, if I start speaking about myself in the third person, right, without an article, Dr. Haugen is shooting video right now. It's like, okay, what's wrong with her? <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, oh, no, that, that, that sounds weird. So the proper article and the absent article are both treated as universal categoricals, right? Uh, the proper article is because it's a categorical singular and the uh, absent article because we're dealing with all of them. All right, so we have categorical singular, the definite, the indefinite, the proper article, the absent article. All right, I'm done dealing with articles. Let's move on to some weird things that happen with copula. We dealt with the articles, now we're gonna deal with the copula. Now, the cop up to this point, Primarily, when we deal with copula, we've been dealing with the to be verbs. Is, at, is as it was, with it, is, was, were, be, being, being, right? Okay. But there are, uh, I mean, English, again, I keep beating up on English. I like English, don't get me wrong, but it, sometimes it can be frustrating. <laughs> um, there are other words that can be used as copula frequently in English that, uh, you know, indicate that the subject is you know, described by the predicate. So birds have wings. All right. Birds have wings. That describes birds, right? Uh, but the copula there is now have. Hmm. You know, the possessive verbs have, has, have been, right? Uh, these also uh, uh, can also be used as copula. You know, the to-do verbs, right? The to-do verbs, did, do, done, right? These are also used as copula, right? So um, Jack did the half mile, right? Okay, well, you know, that <laughs> that means that Jack ran the half mile, right? The Jack is amongst the people that ran the half mile. Okay, um, I did the dishes, right? Uh, the did, you know, the, the, the to-do verb there, did the verb, uh, did the uh, uh, dishes, that is the copula there. Um, even, uh, you know, got, right? Uh, I got sweaty, right? That's a you know, version of the, you know, the, the possessive verb, but 
you know, that that's still the predicate still describes the subject. So sometimes the copulative verb is, is going to be you know, non-standard. It's not going to be the to be verb. To be verb, and there's actually a long list of these things. Too many that I'm gonna I'm not gonna try and go into them all. If you're curious, look them up. <laughs> um, and you know, earlier we talked about absent articles. Well, sometimes the copula is absent too. Right? Sometimes the copula is absent too. The lake flows. Rather, sorry, the river flows. Right? The river flows. Okay, well, that, that's a subject. It's actually also, so we got the definite article, right? <laughs> we have the subject, the rivers. Uh, no copula, but the predicate flows or flowing, right? That tells us that, that at least that river is amongst the things that flow. Right? Uh, now, it's, here's an interesting question. Is the river flows, is that a universal or a particular? I mean, it could be understood either way, right? We're, the river, we're talking about all rivers. Or the river, that river that we're talking about. Yeah. So that's an interesting sort of question. Whether the river flows is going to be universal or particular. And again, you know, I'll say this again, that depends upon context. So I have to look, probably look at that one sentence amongst all the sentences in that paragraph or, or whatever you're reading. Right? All right. So we have the you know, non-standard copula. And you have the absent copula. Now, whether it's non-standard or, or, or not, uh, that's not going to determine whether it's an affirmative or a negative. Okay. Um, probably, I'm going to hazard a guess here, but I haven't thought about this, so you know, I might need to backtrack later on. <laughs> but I'm going to guess if the copula is absent, it's always an affirmative. Okay. But, yeah, let's... Put a thumbtack in that, right? Maybe you know, maybe the idea is if you have no clue, right? <laughs> guess affirmative. <laughs> but you know, whether you know what the copula does is tells us whether the predicate describes or not. So you have to look into context. You have to look at the meanings of the sentence to determine whether the predicate describes the subject or not. That's going to determine whether it's an affirmative or a negative. Right? So yeah, English is fun. We got all these rules and we love to break them. We have these categoricals, and what you have to do, what you're expected to do, is to be able to identify. Which of the four kind of categoricals you have, and the parts of those, uh, the parts of the uh, uh, categorical, the quantifier, the subject, the predicate, the copula. Right. So here, here's another one: birds fly. Well, now the quantifier is absent and the copula. So is it a universal? Is it a particular? Is it an affirmative or a negative? Fish swim. Animals breathe. Right. Sun shines. Quantifier's absent. Copula's absent. You still have to identify which kind of categorical it, at, it, it has. And, you know, if, we, if the parts are missing, well, okay, then the parts are missing. And you just kind of note that. <coughs> but, the, um, but what's important to remember here is you know, we got four kinds. Universal affirmative, universal negative, particular affirmative, particular negative. What well, makes a universal particular, whether you're dealing with all members of the subject or just, or just some. Or at least, I'm sorry, not just, at least some, right? At least one. Uh, affirmative or negative, whether the predicate describes or is not, just does not describe. Right? All right. Those are our four kinds of categoricals. Believe it or not, this is just getting started. This is you know, the really easy stuff. Getting started with logic. What we have to think about next is, well, then what can we do with these? What inferences can we make? Mm -hmm.